What's up gamers, Coco Mojo here with another sub rogue odd review. This is a 20 Halls of Atonement run that I did with the team that I've been playing with for most of season three. So starting off, we're going left and going straight into the shard. The plan is to use Bloodlust and pretty much blow all of our cooldowns here and try to get as much value as we can. So I'm basically opening up and just getting everything rolling on this shard. I do one black powder to get a little bit of threat on the whole pack for the, the tank. And then I switch to just funneling the, the shard. My goal here is to build combo points and spend on eviscerates, keeping slice and dice and rupture up for as much time as I can. They're just, uh, I saw that our, uh, our Enhancement Shaman had died, and I wasn't sure if we had a curse to spell, so I ended up cloaking the curse off myself. And then here I end up using Evasion to avoid the damage from the Shard's Thrash. That ends up saving your healer a ton of time, just not needing to focus on you or the tank. They can focus on themselves and the other two DPS. It's a really high value use of Evasion in this key. I think one mistake I... One mistake I make here is um, not using kick enough. I probably could have fit in one more kick here on the um, on the Wicked Bolts. And now that we have two Curse Dispels, stopping the Curses is a little bit less value, but we will still want to stop Curses when we know the Collector is going to be casting Siphon Life. Because that's going to require our, our healer to use their Dispel to get that off uh, whoever ends up being on immediately. And so if two curses go out and the siphon life goes on someone else, then someone's going to get hit really hard. Oh, there I end up using a cheap shot on the Houndmaster to stop the rapid fire. It was pointed right at our team, and we ended up taking some damage from it. But if that's, like, pointed at your team, like, this one's not pointed at anyone, and so we just let it go. But if it's pointed at your whole team, that can actually do a ton of damage on a high enough key. So we're kind of just cleaning these guys up. I get uh, some fairly high duration ruptures going on both of them, and I'm just kind of building combo points. We're going to take this into the next pull. We have a couple casters here, so I put one on focus, and basically everything here has the same HP, so I'm just in full AoE mode. Yeah, there's not a lot to say in this pull, but I guess the, the biggest thing is... I guess I could be using more... Okay, so there's one stun on uh, one of the casts. I think that's pretty high value. Um, the other thing is you want to watch out for the deadly thrusts. They are going to do a lot of damage. So making sure that we are avoiding those deadly thrusts is the name of the game in, in any pull with a dark blade. In general, this week was pretty fine. I mean, this honestly, this this dungeon kind of claps on uh, on fortified for the tank, especially. And so I'm like kind of torn here. I run mind numbing poison because it's like the standard DR poison that you want to be running. But there's some pulls here where I feel like crippling poison might actually be the play. And then I'm doing this commentary on a. Um, on a Spiteful Necrotic week, and I've been running Crippling Poison and I think it's Night Terrors, the um, slow on Shuriken Storm talent. And it feels like having a Frost Mage in the group again. It's kind of crazy the amount of slow that that combo of Crippling Poison and Night Terrors provides. And on the Spiteful Necrotic week, it's been valuable, but I could see there being a case to be made for running that talent in here, and then swapping to Crippling Poison for some pulls. We decided to tame the Stoneborn here. It's a little early, I think. Um, oh, this... Uh, okay, so we stunned that Houndmaster. The uh, the rapid fire was pointed down this, this bridge, so we wanted to make sure that that wasn't going to be shooting everyone. Yeah, so we, we tamed the Houndmaster a little early, and this gives us a little bit more damage on that Houndmaster, but also the damage reduction aura that the, the Houndmaster provides. Um, we knew this pull was going to be kind of rough with the dogs and the Dismantler, 
And we had uh, we'd actually attempted this key on a 21 before, and this pull went south. Um, it's definitely a tough pull. Um, I'd like to find a way for us to take this the Stoneborn into the Shard, though. Especially on higher fortified keys. The DR, I think, on the Shards is going to be really valuable. At this point, I'm sitting on all of my damage. We... I know the shards coming in. I know we're going to be pulling the groundskeepers, and so I'll get some funnel value off of them. Um, looking to to start this with high combo points. I should slice and dice here. So I just wasted two combo points. That was kind of unfortunate. Um, let's see how this goes. So I evasion early here on the first one. I think that's that's fine. Um, the other mistake that I'm making here is not having the Collector on fo Okay, so I just put my, my focus on the Collector. Um, I want to always be f targeting the Shard. I want all my damage to go into the Shard. But the Collector has some kicks, right? The uh, the Collect Sins is a, a valuable thing to kick if no one else has a kick. And I just pressed Shadow Blades. But I think... I may have wanted to actually hold that. Yeah, I mean, I guess I get pretty much the full duration out of it. Yeah, I guess that that was a fine use of Shadow Blades. Um, we were wrapping up the pole. I got full duration out of it. That's that's okay. Um, in general, like my my motto is press cooldowns as often as possible. Right, you want to get as many uses into the key as you can. And then you want to save them for some specific moments. There's actually a case, though, later on in this key where I follow my usual motto and it ends up not going very well. So we'll, we'll talk about that when we get there. But here we are focusing the Houndmaster, right? The Houndmaster is going to be doing a lot of team dam. Um, oh, I think I was like mid global or I didn't have. Why, why did I use blind there? I had, okay, so I had combo points, I could have kidney shotted, and that would have been higher value than blind because we wouldn't have gotten that one extra shoot and the rapid fire that we had to stun. So it would have saved us one stun, and I would have blind for something else. There's not really anything I'm going to need blind for here, so it's not a terrible use of blind, but I think the, the kidney shot would have been higher value. And now that that Houndmaster is out of the way, we are just we're on AoE. We're just gonna be pressing Shirk and Storm and Black Powder, trying to kick and trying to And uh yeah, trying to stun things and that's that's pretty much it. Dodging the Dark Blade front duel. I actually think this next pull is where a mistake happens. So we basically have this pull where we're going to pull in all of the groundskeepers and the relics, and then we're going to go into the shard. And the problem here is that we have all of our damage right now, and somehow we get, I think we get Vi, or we get we get a Woe, which is really weird. We also t get this Stoneborn a little early, which is not great. Um, but we got this random Woe, which I guess gives us DR on the, uh, on the next but the other problem is we ended up using all of our damage cooldowns here like I used flag and uh, and shuriken tornado on uh, on this pull and then our lock used his uh, his tyrant our enhanced shaman used his wolves like we used everything on this pull because everything was up and now we're going into what's like a, an objectively more difficult pull and this is going to take forever. Um, let's see here. Full combo points. Okay. <clears throat> this is okay. I guess my cooldowns come up like pretty soon into this. One thing I'd like to see is a stun in here. I'd like to see me stun this... Uh, the guy I've got on focus to try to stop some of this damage going out on the tank. 
I'm definitely in full focus mode on this uh, on this shard though. Okay, there's a stun. What did I stun? <clears throat> did, I, did I actually stun? Yeah. Hold on, I missed that. What did I stun? Oh, I stunned the. Okay, so I stunned the obliterator. That's that's fine. So I'm definitely in full focus mode here on this shard though. I'm like our our warlock died. He got the siphon life on him and didn't get dispelled quickly enough, so he ends up dying. And so we're losing like we have like really low damage on this pull. Um, first of all, it's like a four target pull, which is okay for sub. Do I send flag here? I should just send flag. Okay, good. I send flag. Um, yeah, we just need to kill this shard as soon as possible. I think I'm going to get full value out of the flag window. Yeah, so I get to 30 stacks on the shard, and then I get to take that verse and haste buff into the uh, the last two mobs here. So that's, that's totally fine. But yeah, that pull took us like a good like a minute and a half. That was... Uh, that was not a great pull for, for us. This pull doesn't go very well for me either. And um, part of that is like, I'm trying to do too many things. Um, so we've got this this Houndmaster here. No one's range kicking this this guy. So I, I end up kicking him. And we get all these guys grouped up. And I'm like... I think I'm just like focusing on too many things. Like I'm not focused on the Houndmaster. I'm spending too much time thinking about the two obliterators. This rapid fire. Okay, so someone stops at rapid fire. That's that's pretty good. I'm also like not in melee range of the Houndmaster for a lot of this. So I'm not getting shadow techniques procs. I'm not getting uh, melee damage in. I'm like kind of concerned about the uh, the Gargans and. Uh, I'm spending a lot of time thinking like a healer and uh, and thinking about the tank instead of uh, focusing on dealing damage. So this is like one of those pulls that I should I should very much consider swapping to crippling poison for. Like our tank has to to kite. It's uh it's kind of kind of scary for for all of us, but. We make it out okay. Our healer is just uh, extra thirsty at the end. This is kind of weird. I distract. Normally I'll distract to buy some time, but it does not affect the Gargans. What Usually what, what happens is when you root a mob, they will, um, if they're the leader of the pack, basically all the mobs are like tethered to a leader. And if you root or stop the leader, then the whole pack stops. But that doesn't seem to be the case with Inspired. I'll have to try to learn more about that. Let's see, what do we get into here? So we are full funnel right now. I should be pressing my agility pot. I don't know why I'm not potting here. Okay, I pot. That's good. It was a little late. I missed a lot of value, actually, by not potting before the uh, shuriken tornado. I also made a mistake in uh, shadow striking twice after getting a weapon master proc. So that was a... That was a mess up. I was going to cap on Shadow Dance Chargers, so I... Oh, I pulled Threat. That's the other thing that happens here. And I end up needing to vanish. I fat fingered my Cloak, too. I don't know why I pressed Cloak. That was silly. But... Honestly, getting Ur here is kind of cracked, because, like, I get so much value from the uh, the cooldown reduction. It's, it's kind of insane. Like... I'm doing 25k DPS here. I mean, part of that is the uh, the stoneborns. Like, I'm probably doing like 15 to 18k DPS. The stoneborns add like, it ends up adding like uh, around 10% to my damage here, I believe. But yeah, getting getting all my cooldowns that many times in a row is uh, is kind of crazy. I think I should have reapplied Rupture there instead of Slice and Dice. I think the uh, the Rupture still had some time left, and the or rather the, the Slice and Dice still had some time left, and the Rupture was definitely uh, within its pandemic window. If I hadn't fat fingered Cloak, then I also would have been able to just run through the uh, the beam there and get a little more uptime. 
lost a little bit of uptime there. Yeah, this um another case of me distracting and then all the other mobs just like continuing to run. Luckily we still had a big enough gap, but that was a little scary there. Alright, let's see. So shuriken tornado into flag into rupture. Oh, here's the shuriken tornado. Yeah, so okay. I don't hate this. I think it might have been better to save the shuriken tornado for these ads because we're gonna do a gore fiends here and i'm gonna get some pretty good funnel value potentially um looks like i'm just black powdering so uh, we didn't really have the aoe to uh, kill all the ads so i'm just pressing black powder i think i've missed a global Should be pressing. Okay, so there's Shadow Dance. We have the Curse of Stone coming up, and I'm kind of curious what I do here. Do I flag? I'm holding. Okay, I held CDs. That was smart. I, this is one thing I'm trying to get better at. Is I see my weak horse light up, and I want to just press the button. So here I should slice and dice, and then tint tornado. Look at that. I'm learning. I uh, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to get better about not just like. Just like pressing my my CDs insta when they come come up, and instead checking my boss timers first, because uh, pressing your your cooldowns and then needing to do a mechanic is like a huge damage loss. That's um that's one thing that I definitely need to continue to practice. The other thing that I've done recently, although it's not done in this video is uh, I've removed my Grim Codex trinket from my like Eviscerate and Black Powder. In this run, and for a lot of my runs, I've just had it macroed in. Um, I think I end up pressing Cloak here because I wasn't sure if I was going to get a Dispel. But yeah, I, um, I had it macroed in. Oh yeah, I should save. I should save damage here, do I? Yeah, I do. Okay. So yeah, I had it macroed into my Eviscerate and Black Powder, just trying to get value from deeper daggers. And I was finding that there were a couple of problems with this. One, if I'm just spamming my Eviscerate or Black Powder, the the uh, the trinket will cast. But if I'm on GCD, then the, uh, the ability won't cast, so I don't get the deeper daggers anyway. Um, the other problem is that I was using the trinket when um like before damage amp phases and things like that and so now i'm just pressing it on cooldown myself and that's okay and i can intentionally save it for uh oh this is a mess up actually i think i had called that i was watching x that was oh that was actually kind of sick so check this out. I'm watching X because we need to stop the loyal beasts and the X is already stunned yard. And so I see he's immune when I hit him with the kidney shot. And in the last like half second, I hit blind to stop the loyal beast from going off. That was actually kind of cracked. So this is another one of those pulls where swapping to crippling poison might be more value than, uh, than mind numbing poison. Like, slowing the autos is really good, but we don't have any way to consistently slow mobs. I guess we have, um, because we run two shamans, we have two earthbind totems, which is like the, the slow totem. And um, our, our DK is also really good about... Um, he's also really good about using D&D &D to... Um, to kite as well so maybe i don't need to if we can be a little more coordinated with our slows but like a passive what, like 70 percent slow from from my poisons and uh and night terrors is like 
seems pretty pretty good. So here I want to start doing damage, but I'm also like afraid of deadly thrust. So <laughs> I've seen our shaman die to it so many times in this key that I'm just like I'm gonna take the scenic route. Um, there's five mobs here, so actually pressing. I'm way over capped on shadow dance charges. That was a uh, that was pretty bad actually. I did a really bad job this pull. So first of all, I had no CDs um, going in except for dance and symbols, um, and then I get flag late enough that I decide to not press it. And then on top of that, I'm this is the second time now that I've been capped on shadow dance charges. So this was an awful pull for me. I. Uh, I definitely need to be pressing Shadow Dance when I'm at two. Even if the pull's like about to die, even if I'm, you know, just AoEing a few mobs, like that's just damage left on the table. But yeah, so here's another tip. I probably a lot of people know this, but if you don't, you can um just spam your tame stoneborn button if there are two stoneborns in range, and you can tame two at a time. Really good for bosses like this. I'm a little bit out of range. I'm like... Kind of afraid of the Ur slam there, so... I'm like backing up away from the boss a little bit, but I lost a little bit of value in my in my cooldowns. I think I was also about to cap on Shadow Dance charges there. So I pressed Shadow Blades. I also wasted a Weapon Master proc. I think what I should have done is saved Shadow Blades to line up with Flag. Because let's see, if I can get 30 stacks of Flag here, then I will have made up for it. But if I don't get 30 stacks of Flag, then I... Yeah, I get 28 stacks of Flag, so... And I had Shadow Blades, to be fair, I had Shadow Blades for most of that Flag, but think if I have it for more, or I'm actually, I missed, um, I ended up missing some uh, Shadow Dance time at the end of that flag, too. So, you know, our, our Warlock was the only kick there. It got to the point where, um, <clears throat> on this boss, like, if you're not pulling any trash into it, it can be pretty autopilot. So, I think this is, like, one of the, the fights where we can... Um, oh, this actually kind of sucks. I lose so much melee uptime. So, like, one thing that we should try to do is... Um, is try pulling the boss over to a lantern immediately when... Uh, like, before there's a... Um, before there's a ghost, because... If we can get the boss over by a lantern, then as soon as a ghost spawns, we don't have to worry about moving the boss or losing any melee uptime. Okay, this was alright. I missed one finisher before my shuriken tornado. I'm capped on shadow dance charges. Press shadow dance, please. Please. Okay, we press shadow dance. Three finishers late. That's okay. Um, yeah, I'm, like, I feel like generally I've improved quite a bit over the last couple of weeks of, of playing this class. Like, I'm still fairly new to the class, so I'm, like, trying to not be too tough on myself, but I'm definitely wasting resources. I'm wasting combo points. I'm wasting shadow techniques procs. I have flag off cooldown right now. I guess maybe I'm thinking that we'll be fighting the mini boss soon, and I don't want to be pressing flag. I'm also like starved on energy right now. Okay, I pressed my uh, my arcane torrent immediately. That's pretty good. Crimson vial, cause this guy is uh, is hitting me. All right, I'm blowing CDs on this guy. That's fine. I had one random shuriken storm in there, which uh, was definitely unnecessary. So this guy is like, 
he he's a straight up boss and he i mean he's like a target dummy so you can actually like do some kind of crazy dam on him because there's like no real mechanics um but what's awesome is if you can get all of the all of the yellow mobs down in that room and then you have whatever number of hostile mobs left over if you can get flag on this guy and funnel off those hostile mobs you can do some insane single target dam um let's see do i send flag again i probably should send flag here but i'm thinking of the boss i should at least press shadow dance this is killing me like i can at least press shadow dance right right i'm capped on charges i was i I should have known that I was going to cap on charges a few seconds ago. This is uh this is time lost, right? <clears throat> I should definitely be um it seems I must be, gone right be at least pressing shadow dance there. Okay, this is all right. We get into the uh we basically get flag up on the boss. We get um, we get a rupture going, and then we we just start hitting the boss with the the shuriken tornado. That's okay. Let's get a slice and dice. Re okay, slice and dice refreshed, and now door of shadows coming up. I have flag coming up. I will have symbols. I just refresh a rupture. I probably should have waited and. I just wasted a weapon master proc. I remember asking my shaman if I should um if I should use cloak on this and he told me to just hold it for for next. Let's get the rupture back up there. Okay. Now I actually have a lot right now. And we have a little bit of time before the uh, the next intermission. I think I lose a global there. Okay, I didn't quite lose a global, so that's that's fine. That's tough because uh, with the statue and it goes through melee like that, you um you have to get out to dodge. And losing up time on this boss is like an absolute killer. So we get right in. So I get the double soak and then I press cloak, but I think I should have waited a little bit longer. I pressed Arcane Torrent in that Shadow Dance. Why did I do that? Let's see what's going on here. I probably also should have held Shadow Dance for Flag. Because now I'm going to get a dog shit flag. That one was kind of in melee. Alright, so I got 28 stacks of... Or 27 stacks of flag. I'm just going to stand in on this. Because I know I have cheat death. And I, I told my healer I was going to do it. It's a healing problem now. He can he can fix my grievous. But at this point, I, I just want more uptime. And uh, now we're just cleaning up the boss. I reacted to at least one rep Weapon Master proc in there. That's that's cool. But yeah, this run was um, was really fun. Um, we had a fair amount of time at the end. We um, we ended up, like I said before, we ended up trying it on a twenty one and just had like too many mistakes. Like we we weren't warmed up and we made a ton of mistakes. So running it back on the twenty was a lot better. The second time around um yeah definitely a fun run overall i feel like i did all right the um the biggest problem was over capping on resources again this is like definitely one of my problems either setting up my my cooldown windows and not not being like prepared for them correctly like more or less missing out on on combo points from the uh, the shirk and tornado i feel like it is a problem that i continue to have it's like less often but it definitely happened two or three times in this run and then over capping on 
combo points in AOE, sometimes getting thrown off by pressing kick, and then like I get into this rhythm where I'm like Shuriken Storm and then some other button. And if that other button isn't a finisher, then I just will press Shuriken Storm again for some reason. My brain is just like ready to to be in that pattern. And it is definitely not great because that's uh that's we resources wasted. Um and then capping on dance charges. I did that a couple of times here where I could have gotten more value and I'm losing cooldown reduction on, on Shadow Dance when I'm spending any combo points with two dance charges. So it's just like fewer casts than uh than I I really should have in a key. But but yeah, let me know in the comments if you if you learned something from this or thought the gameplay was fun to watch. And uh, definitely feel free to ask any questions here or in the Discord. We've got a bunch of folks in there who are chatting about Rogue. So feel free to join and uh, good luck out there.